used to crowdsourcing everything, from funding your project on Kickstarter to polling your Twitter followers as to what sweater you should be wearing that day. But did you know that you can get in on some crowdsourced science? Fold It, a game by University of Washington at Seattle researchers, made headlines last year for being a great example of crowdsourced or citizen science. The game challenged users to fold proteins into their lowest energy conformations. But the game wasn't just for fun. Researchers were actually studying the proteins that the users created and also creating puzzles to answer real-life scientific questions. Open to the entirety of the internet, users provided insights into folding of a protein essential to the reproduction of the AIDS virus in only three weeks after the puzzle was introduced, and have since gone on to remodel proteins to meet specific scientific needs. Users submitted over 100,000 designs to one of the researchers' latest puzzles, and researchers then took those designs and synthesized a test group of them in the lab to create real-life proteins. Most of these users aren't scientists, and they're not being paid. They're just interested citizens with internet connections who are doing real science. Probably in their pajamas. I think this is fantastic, not least of all because many projects turn to the internet and turn to citizen scientists because human minds are better at solving these problems than computer simulations. Human intuition and a desire to solve puzzles led thousands of users in Foldit to create better proteins than computer simulations and to do it on a much larger scale than the lab could have accomplished on its own. Scientific American has a great citizen science page with projects ranging from you creating video clips of you playing with your dog to help study human-canine interaction to identifying tropical storm patterns. I'll put the link in the doobly-doo because there are so many cool projects that you, you right there at your computer can get involved in right now as soon as you open a new tab in your browser. Of course, you should probably finish watching my video first. So there's one of these projects that I've been working on lately that is a ton of fun called the Seafloor Explorer. Basically, scientists drag a big camera behind a boat and take lots and lots of images of the seafloor. And when I say lots, I mean about 30 million. Researchers can then use this data to answer questions about things like species distribution and the spread of invasive species and also things like changes in terrain. The researchers have mounds and mounds and mounds of data, but they need human eyes to go through it all and tell them what's there. And that's where we come in. So here we are on the Seafloor Explorer page. You can click on about or science to learn a little bit more about the project and what they're doing. But here we are, help explore the ocean floor, and we are going to dive in. So first thing is it brings you to a tutorial. And so you begin the tutorial and first, the first thing you do in each image is you identify the ground cover. So this will lead you through it. In this picture we see sand, gravel, and shell. And then there's this big boulder on the left, so we mark that there's a boulder. And we're done with that. And here we get to the cool part. So there are three different kinds of animals that we're going to label in this image, but four total. There are scallops, fish, sea stars, and crustaceans. So the most prominent thing here is the fish. So we click fish. And then it has you size these animals. So you drag from nose to tail, you drag from side to side, and now you've labeled a fish. And so it's really important that you pay attention in this tutorial just to make sure that you know what you're doing and how to correctly identify things because now we've gone on to scallops and the first thing it points out is a dead scallop. So you don't wanna label any dead things. So this one has a hole in it and it's not quite right. You hit continue. But now here's a live scallop, and again, we label the size of the scallop. Cool. And now there are sea stars here, and we label the size of the sea star. And there are other species in here, so there are some spongy looking things, and there's some other little animals in here. So we will click, yes, there are other species present, and now we are done identifying species. And when you get here, this is the tutorial, so it doesn't show you, but you'd get to see all sorts of uh, information about that image that was taken, where it was taken, um, the temperature of the water, all sorts of other stuff. If you're confused as to like what is cobble, you can click on the field guide and you can compare so you can see here's what sand looks like, shell, gravel, cobble, boulder, and you can also look at identifying different kinds of species in this field guide. So they give you all the tools you need to be able to look at these images. So that's it, that's the Seafloor Explorer. And if you look, this is part of the Zooniverse website and so there are all sorts of similar things that you can do on here. You can explore the ocean, you can help marine researchers understand what whales are saying. You can classify animals uh, on the Serengeti. Or, this one's pretty cool, uh, this is the Andromeda Project. And so, the tagline for this one is awesome. We're on a collision course with the Andromeda Galaxy. Help researchers understand the awesomeness of the Andromeda Galaxy, because one day, we'll be in it. 
So this is great, this is Zooniverse, and there are a lot of really cool uh, citizen science projects on this website. Go forth, do science. Like right now, go. go. Why, why are you still looking at me? There are links below to all sorts of cool things that you can be doing right now. Go. Go.